Good morning from Denali National Park up in Alaska. Yes, and the next couple of days we are going to be here and showing you around. So yes, you're gonna see us in different clothes and stuff One like video, that. several days. Right, so we invite you to get your popcorn, get something to drink, sit back, and enjoy Denali National Park with us. The good thing is, sitting on your couch watching pop, eating popcorn and watching this video, you don't have to fight mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, I have a sock cap on, not because it's cold, but because the mosquitoes are attacking my head. I don't All know right. why. We have several things planned for the next couple days. Um, we are a little limited. Now, if you've been watching the news, there's an avalanche. So over half of the park is closed yeah. to traffic. Way over half. But we're gonna do the best we can. Uh, we're fighting avalanche, wildfires, and rain. So. So that's why the sky does not look clear. We have smoke and boy, it smells smoky. Yeah. Alrighty, let's get going and show you this park. about a mile into the park when you just get past that sign where we're at is the Riley Creek Mercantile so when you come in here this is where you're gonna check in uh, to get your campsite now they don't have assigned campsites here what you do is you pick a class an A a B or I think there's even a C class of campsite you pay and you go back there and find an empty spot and you take it um, they're booked well in advance so I booked this uh, it's July now and I booked this in January, uh, December or January, of probably December of last year. So uh, you need to be working several, several months out ahead. So anyway, this is where you get a shower, you check in for your, your campsite, everything. This is kind of like the, the central headquarters for the campground. Uh, we are just on a walking path, not too far from here. Show you that later, but let's go up here and take a look. Right behind me, within easy walking distance, I mean, I'm talking about less than five minutes from the campground itself is the shuttle bus stop. So you can, you don't really need your car. You can get on the shuttle bus and it'll take you anywhere you need to go on in the park. It's free, it's on and off. Now, Nancy and I have decided not to do this. Now, later on in the video, you'll see that we're gonna take a tour on a, on one of the buses but we decided not to ride the shuttle buses so what happens is the train comes here and uh, tour buses from the cruise ships come here and they are packed with people off the cruise ship now not that they had the plague or anything but being there's a um, there's a high level of COVID in this area and the last thing we need to do is get sick on this thing. Now they've got mask mandates in effect and things like that, but the last thing we need to do is get sick. So uh, we are not going to ride the shuttle bus. Um, we're gonna either walk or take a car to one of the remote parking lots. But um, in normal times, know that you can just hop on a uh, shuttle bus and go anywhere you wanna go. Always, we stop at the visitor center when we enter a national park because you don't really know what's going on so we are gonna go in here get our book stamped get our Christmas ornament stamp the back of it and get our map of the park and we want to watch the movie because oh, that's right we hear they got an excellent movie on the sled dogs of Denali National Park so we want to make sure we see that and uh, I understand in the basement they have a really nice uh, display of the park and the map so we're gonna probably spend at least an hour here uh, looking around so oh they have a cafe here too yes bad thing 
mask, ma mask mandate again. This is a little village, you might say. Back here is the cafe, which we had chicken tenders there the other day, really good. And um, the park store, and then over this way is the visitor center. So let's go take a look at the visitor center first. This is a topographical map of the area. Uh, it shows Denali, uh, Mount McKinley and the whole Denali National Park. Um, I want to flip the camera around and show you a couple things here because it kind of shows the, the whole region that we're in and right. where we've been. And, and how where that, we can't go. <laughs> where, where, yeah, that's true. And uh, how that relates to the places where we've been. Um, let's take a look at this. So you can see here's the uh, road down to Anchorage and the Talkeetna Spur. So we uh, actually went to Cal Talkeetna there the other day and um, we have taken this road all the way around through the mountains you can see and we have ended up all the way over here at the visitor center. So um, we, as you can see, we've come all the way on the George Parks Highway and it follows the, the Alaskan Railway right almost almost side by side the whole way. So we came down through there to the visitor center. Now, once you get to the visitor center, the campground's right in here and, uh, and everything. So that's where we're camping. Now, the only thing that you can do now is go to Savage River. This is the only section of the highway that's open that you can go to um, with your own private vehicle. And uh, we had booked a tour to go from Salvage River, uh, Savage River all the way up to uh, Wonder Lake there in the Ellison Visitor Center, but because of the avalanche, all this whole section is closed. So uh, this is as far as we can go right now. Now, in a couple days, we'll take a bus tour and we'll go up a little bit further, but this is as far as you can go. So, at this time, you're very limited, but uh, it's pretty cool. We have not seen Mount McKinley. Uh, I don't expect that we're going to be able to see that because of the fires are really raging. So, Nancy and I drove up into that region up there uh, a couple days ago, and it's just covered in wildfires and there's a lot of smoke, so I doubt we'll be able to see any of this. But uh, that kind of gives you an idea of where we're at and what we're doing. I want to know how far will our bus tour take us? Uh, our bus tour is going to take us, I think, as far as the polychrome overlook, but not very far. We, when we originally booked the tour, it was going to be 10 hours and we were going to go all the way to the end of the road. Um, but that's not going to be possible this trip. So we have to come back. Oh, we are coming back right? In two years. I hope so. The museum talks about the people that inhabited the land. So the other things they talk about, the animals and, and uh, you know, the, how the, they survive. How they survive, right. And this is mainly uh, talking about the people. So they go back to the Athabascan people uh, and they talk about, uh, you know, how they uh, survived in this area. With time and money to spare, we're eager to experience this new national park. Many traveled thousands of miles by train to the docks in Seattle, to Seward, Alaska by steamship. There you go, hon, there is your dog sled. I know, this is what I really, really wanted to ride, but I got my dog sled right. 
So we're going to come back in the winter, right? So I can watch it, ride a dog sled, and we can see the northern lights. She keeps saying this. I have no idea. <laughs> we're doing it. But every time she sees a dog sled, she wants to ride the dog sled. So this is it. This is where you come and get your stamp. We've already put our book back in the car, but I'll show you what this looks like. Can you see it? So anyway, July 12th, just in case you're wondering, Denali National Park. Uh, there's the campground where we're at. There's the parks, the parks highway. And so you can see the Savage River campground way over there, but we're down here. So all of this is closed. You're not able to see any of that, but um, we're here at the visitor center and um, that's certainly open and very, very well done. So behind me, they have a display here and uh, the maps of all the hikes in the park. I think it's really good here because they give you the difficulty and um, how, how long it takes you to get it done. So you can stop off in here and get your map and plan your activities for the day. Oh my word, this is a great store. T-shirts, sweatshirts, stuffed animals, stickers, books, hats, cups, mugs, paintings. Oh my word. It's amazing. Ed, show them around this store. This is the food service area. So listen, this is kind of Disney-esque, you might say. So um, they have the train station, the bus station, all these tour groups. So it's right now with all the cruise ship passengers, it's pretty packed in here. Uh, we're not going to eat in here, but I'll show you in here really quick. We are on our way up to Savage River. Right. And that's as far as you can take your personal cars. And then from there, you can take a bus trip, which we are going to do later this week, mm -hmm. and go as far as you can then, which is to where? I'm not quite sure because of the avalanche. So right. So I'm, we'll find out mm -hmm. on our bus <laughs> trip, and you'll see it with us. Um, we haven't seen a lot of wildlife. We've been a little bit disappointed that we did see a moose this morning. Right, a baby uh, or, my, or mom, I yeah, don't know what it was. Yeah, it's a female probably, yeah. but um, we haven't seen a whole lot of wildlife. No. But um, <gasps> we saw two squirrels. <laughs> oh, and um, oh, we saw, saw a lynx. A lynx. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure if I mentioned this before, back at the campground, uh, a lynx walked right through the campground. I mean, yeah. like, really close <laughs> but he was so excited he forgot to take a picture I got so excited about it I started telling other people about it and a guy sitting next to me was fumbling for his phone I was fumbling for mine he was gone by the time it got, yeah. it got there so all right we're gonna continue on this road it's a peaceful drive uh, even if we don't see any wildlife Oh my word, can you hear this water? It's so peaceful here. We are at the spot that in the 20s and 30s, this was the campground. And then the superintendent decided, hey, let's try to make roads to go on back. Because at this time, when people would come here, they would go by train to Seattle, Washington, get on a steamer, go to Stewart, and then another train up here. Mm -hmm. So then they started making the roads. So this road uh, went from the park entrance up to here, or actually basically from the train station up to here. They take st uh, stagecoaches and later on motor cars, but they could only go here 15 miles into the park. Uh, today, if it wasn't for the avalanche, right. you could go about 85 miles up into the park. Today, uh, because of the avalanche, it just stops yeah. you up there. But this once upon a time was the camp and where everybody would come to. Um, very few people got an actual look at Mount McKinley. They they actually thought, everybody thought they were going to see it, but only about 30% of the people that come here actually get to see it. Still so. to this day, yeah. yeah. And we are not going to be one of those 30%. Yeah, because all this Unless smoke. this smoke clears out pretty quick, but yeah. if it does, we'll let you see so it. So the trail's been great. Well, we're going to hang out here for just a few minutes and then walk back up to the van.
here you go there's quite a big train station here so um, the train comes through here it looks like about I don't know maybe every hour hour and a half during the day and uh, brings in hundreds of people so people come up transfer from the train to the cruise ships here uh, there's buses waiting to pick them up people some people are on a train package where they stop in each city and get off with their luggage and do everything so a lot of, you know uh, as we told you before a lot of people back in the day this is the only way they could get here was uh, through the train uh, today there's several modes of transportation of course they have the parks highway that runs up here now but um, so the train station's got one two uh, three four five about six buildings here so we've got quite an operation from the campground we can hear the whistle although I can tell you I have not seen the train here itself personally there's a trestle on the road up here that we'd really like to see the train going across the trestle but getting it time just right is really hard so um, hey I just thought I'd let you see this but um, it's pretty cool I've got the summer schedule here maybe I'll be able to catch the, uh, the actual train itself and who knows one day I might even be able to take a trip on this train I think it'd be I think it'd be well worth it so alrighty just you know and when you come out of this train station let me turn the camera around so when you come out of the train station right there uh, there's a path that goes right up there in the visitor center although you can't see it for the trees the visitor center that little village that we took you to earlier that's all right there so it's all within really easy walking distance uh, from the train station or from the bus station. here in Denali and they just called the 10 minute boarding for our backcountry um, tundra wilderness tour. So we're getting ready to go to our spot and get on our bus. Get on the bus, Gus. <laughs> I've been waiting to say that. I bet you have. Uh, this is going to be fun. So we booked this tour about six months ago. Yes. It's, it's pretty popular. Um, so we got some good things and some bad things. The bad things is, is it's raining, but the good thing is, is that has uh, stifled the fires a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so the smoke is disappearing. So here we go. We're gonna get on the bus, and this is gonna be fun. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, we're on our way. We are so excited. So he just told us right here in front of us is a screen, and apparently they have something. like a telescope type thing on the bus. I'm proud right. of myself. So they can like zoom in on something if it's far away and we can see it on a television screen, but it is still out in the wild, right? Right. Okay. Yep. All right. Pretty excited about this. Yes, we are. We've stopped for a rest break and he's going to have water when we get back on, but tell him what river we're alongside. <laughs> I get stuck pronouncing all the hard, the hard words. The Teklanika River, I think, is what it is. Right. Um, See. Ooh. So. Um, what I what he said. <laughs> I butcher these names, I know, but hey, at least I try. So. <laughs> I'm so, not even gonna try. We're about an hour into this tour. It's really good. We've it's a got, five hour tour. We've got a good guide. He oh, said he's, he's been doing this really for good. Twenty five years. Twenty five years. Yeah. Very um, good. The information he passes along is very good. So every hour or whatever they've got these little rest areas fixed up here with restrooms and everything like that i mean we're way out in the wild but 
it's it's still got mo modern conveniences, you might say. Well, they're they're pits, toilets. <laughs> they're toilets but, but, yeah, but, if, um, if you call that convenience. But anyway, we're having a great time. Look at these mountains behind us. Oh man, it's awesome. One of the things that the uh, bus driver was explaining to us, and it's kind of counterintuitive. So. Uh, being a flatlander in Indiana and growing up in the Midwest, most of the rivers run north and south, so you think about that. Uh, but here, uh, the river is all flowing to the Bering Sea, so the river actually runs north. So I know that, that that's one thing that kind of played with my mind a little bit, is that knowing what direction I was headed and then looking at the flow of the river. So this uh, river flows north into the Yukon, and then the Yukon would flow into the Bering Sea. So uh, just kind of counterintuitive from what I'm used to seeing. Uh, to be a true hibernator, your core bodies have a trust to plummet so that the ground squirrels goes from close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the um, in the summertime down to up as low as 27 degrees Fahrenheit in winter and that's below freezing right and when they're in that state their heart beats only two beats per minute so it's pretty I mean think about that it's pretty wild uh, but they can't stay that way for very long because they would freeze right so what they do is every three or four days they start to really shudder and shake and uh, that raises their body temperature and uh, they'll become active for a few hours and they'll go back into the deep freeze. So with them, it's kind of like a wave pattern, you know? Gorgeous. Oh, wow, look at him. That's a pretty, pretty bear, man. And he's surrounded by bear flower. Huh? How about that? Look at that. He's eating it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people always think of, 80% of their diet is vegetation, right? Beautiful, guys. Gorgeous. Oh. oh, he sees us. Yeah, they do that when they they sense something, you know. They're pretty low to the ground. That's a first all year. Usually you only see that with mothers looking for cubs or cubs looking for uh, mothers. So it's tough to tell. I don't think she, I think her cubs would be uh, close to her, you know. So it's tough to tell the, the um, gender of this bear. It's not real big but it could be a juvenile um, male. They're termed adult at age seven. And you see the hump on its back there? That's indicative of the grizzly bear. Black bears don't have that. Huh. It's just a muscle mass. They're really powerful animals. <laughs> Very quick and agile. And you never know which way they're gonna go. You know, you really don't. So this is our second stop, and we had such a treat just a few minutes ago. We had a grizzly bear, and on this bus, he has like this camera thing that he zooms in on it, and it shows up on the television screens. So it was pretty exciting. Yeah, that's great. It? They got this figured out very well. Oh yeah. So and we look, saw caribou. If you look over there, can you see Denali? It's it's right over there. Yeah, you just can't see it. We can't see it either. No. So, anyway, uh, you know, we still have a few more days, so maybe while we're here we can still see it. We don't know. But this trip, if you come, you need to do this trip. Right. So it's the, called the Tundra Tour. Right. Um, and it's, uh, of course, cheaper now because you don't go the whole way mm -hmm. in. But This, actually, normally you would go about 20 miles farther. Right. Uh, but because the avalanche, right. this is the end. And our bus driver said probably in 2025 it could be opened mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, we got a really good bus driver. He is very knowledgeable about a lot of stuff, so mm -hmm. that's good. In the wintertime, he's a school teacher, so yeah. there yeah. you go. Yeah. The road is dirt all the way back here. Yep, uh, it but sure it's, is. it's maintained pretty well. It's yeah. it's not too bad. It's muddy, but um, yeah. So what they do? Look, look, I'm gonna turn around and show you something here. 
so it kind of looks like we're by ourselves here, but this we're, is, not. <laughs> we're not. This is all the people that are on the bus with us. Um, but um, it's it, people have been very quiet and very respectful, and, and he's narrated the whole time. So. Um, and that's him right there in the green shirt, khaki oh, yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Walk around with a coffee cup in his hand. Yeah. So. Uh, good times. So glad we booked this. Up this way, you cannot bring your own car. You have to do it by bus. So it's very limited. Ed and I keep saying it's kind of, except you pay for this tour that we are on. Mm -hmm. They do have green buses that'll take you different places. It's almost like being at Fort Wilderness. Right. They, it's an on and off situation. Right. So if you want to get out and hike different places, you can, and then catch another bus later on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we are not doing that because I just saw that grizzly bear and it's pretty big. <laughs> There's no way she's getting off. It stood up on its hind legs. So. I think I think there was good value here and what we paid for yes, this and yes. uh, everything. So if you come here and don't purchase one of these tours, it's probably going to be your experience is going to be limited right. unless you hike in the back country. Right. And we don't do that. No. So. <laughs> so. And you can hike in here. You got to get a permit, but you can mm -hmm. hike back and camp, mm -hmm. tent camp only. Right. But I'm not doing that either. Okay. So. We're going to. Adds gonna... on his own. We're going to uh, walk up here and mingle with the rest of the people, but uh, yep. that's pretty much the way it works Then I'm going to get on and have supper because it is, let me see here, it's 7 o'clock. Yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to know what time it is, but it's let me show well you. into the evening. Here. Yeah, look at this. So, 6.57 is the time. Yeah. Where... i got to turn up the, there. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to show you. See this? 6:57, and look at this it's, it's daylight evening, so yeah. we did uh, that was one thing was we did take some snacks with us on this yeah. trip we made some sandwiches yes. because by the time we get back it's going to be late this evening like 9 30. anyway all right let's, and i usually uh, have my jammies on at 9 30. <laughs> let's get up here and mingle a little bit okay. that's the end of our trip and well, not the end fabulous. of our trip, the end of our bus trip. Well, that's what I meant. That's what they're saying, right? You all yeah. knew that, right? Right. So that's the end of this bus trip. Does that make you feel better? That does. Smart aleck man. Anyway, it was really, really mm -hmm. good. They give you a little lunch treat, the uh, snack box, they call it, a bottle of water. Actually, it's a metal bottle. Um, but yeah, and we've had the best driver, don't you think? We've had a really good time. He's yeah. been very informative. Yeah, and the sight's amazing. We did see a moose. Well, everybody did but me, but oh well. I um, really like those little screens that you've seen. Um, the driver has a periscope type of thing or whatever the hands puts in his hands. Right, and, it's uh, connected to the TVs. Yep, and so You'll when see they a do picture. See... I have a really good picture of the bear, but mm -hmm. it's taken from the screen. Right. So. right, we were able to see it, but boy. It's it great. raised up on its hind legs. It was so cool. But anyway. Anyway, this has been a really good trip. I'm so glad we did this. Now, if you do this, you have the book way in advance. I booked this six months ago. Yes. So um, you have to book way in advance, but it was really good. All righty. We, we got about 10 more miles to go on the trip, and then we'll be done. But um, This we'll, is a potty break. Yeah. We'll catch you guys later.